So welcome to Ra Online. Today I am going to take you on uh, general aesthetics, and uh, here the main thing is it is slightly different from other chapters when compared to the inhalational anesthetics where the pharmacokinetics varies. So here mainly the competency assessed here is the student should be able to know the general defined general anesthetics and enumerate the properties of ideal general anesthetic agent. So what do you mean by general anesthetic and what are the properties of ideal general anesthetic agent? Then classification of a general anesthetic agents which is a intravenous general anesthetic as well as the inhalational anesthetic agent. And of course like any other drugs you need to know about the mechanism of action. And uh, as I said earlier the factors that influence the kinetics of inhalational agents. Even with respect to intravenous anesthetic agents it is almost similar like any other drug. But when it comes to the inhalational agent the pharmacokinetics is slightly different. And uh, next thing is you need to know about the terms diffusion, hypoxy and second gas effect. And of course the, some of the salient features of both intravenous as well as the inhalational general anesthetic agents we will discuss. And finally the pre-anesthetic medication very important topic and uh, why we are using the pre-anesthetic medication before the surgery. So these are the things which we are going to cover today. So with, with this outline introduction, history and the stages of anesthesia, the dynamics part which is a mechanism of action and kinetics we are going to see for both intravenous as well as inhalational anesthetic and classification and a few salient features about the individual drugs and what are the complications that can occur with general anesthesia and finally the pre-anesthetic medication. So coming to the introduction, any surgery uh, if you want to do uh, there are some cardinal features, four important features that uh, a general anesthetic should possess. What are they? The first thing is the loss of consciousness. So for example, if anybody is going for a surgery and without having these features and will they allow the surgeons to do the surgery, it is very impossible. So you need first to have a loss of consciousness. So the drug should produce loss of consciousness and little bit of amnesia as well. So that is the main aim. And then the second point is the loss of all sensations, especially the pain sensation. Because when the surgeon puts the knife, he will scream out of pain. So to avoid that, there should be a loss of all the sensation, especially the pain sensation. That is the second aspect. And then the third one is the immobility and muscle relaxation. Because again, there might be some movement of the body. So you need to be uh, still and immobile. And there should be a little bit of muscle relaxation so that the surgery can be done smoothly for especially like abdominal surgery, some other surgeries which involve the muscle relaxation. So there you need to have this third character as well. And then finally abolition of somatic and autonomic reflexes. So in general anesthesia, a drug should produce all these features. Okay. So only if they produce all these features then the surgery can be done smoothly. And of course, there is one important thing is, once you give the general anesthetic drug, you can get all these features, okay fine. But what happens at the end of the surgery? So all these things has to come back. So when you say the cardinal features, you add a word called reversible. So reversible loss of consciousness and amnesia. So once the consciousness would be lost only during the time of surgery and once he wakes up, everything uh, the consciousness should come back once you stop the anesthetic. So similarly the pain sensation, pain sensation should come back and the immobility so the patient should be able to be moving around and the muscle relaxation should come back to it has to come back to the normal contraction phase. Then finally all the reflexes also should come back to normal. So it is mainly a, all these features should be reversible that is the main important of a general anesthetic drug. So coming to the history in 1844, if you see Horace Wells, he is a dental scientist who student actually, medical student who used the nitrous oxide for dental extraction. And when he demonstrated that the nitrous oxide, the person who is taking through the inhalational route, the nitrous oxide, he did not have any pain at all during the dental extraction. So then they started using the nitrous oxide. And then uh, the most important which revolutionized the anesthetic, general anesthetic is in 1846. William Morton who demonstrated the ether anesthesia and uh, this particular the right hand side the picture happened uh, he the William Morton demonstrated a 
the surgery by giving ether anesthesia and that happened in Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston, US and to commemorate that they have made it as a ether dome. Actually there will be a dome in that particular area where they conducted the surgery and that is called as ether dome and so he is the one who revolutionized the general anesthetic after the invention of the ether anesthesia. So they started more of using ether anesthesia. Then in 1847 Simpson in UK he used chloroform in obstetrics. So the chloroform came into practice then. Then uh, finally if you see 1929 cyclopropane came and again there is a one landmark where the 1935 where the thiopentone started using. Previously if you see all these are inhalational agents, no nothing is used as an intravenous route until the invention of thiopentone uh, they started using as an intravenous anesthetic. And finally, in 1956, still more refined form of inhalational anesthetic, which is better than the ether anesthesia, halothane came into existence. And since then, halothane, isoflurane, sevoflurane, desflurane, so many things has came into the market. So, coming to the stages of anesthesia. So, we need to know the anesthesia, different stages are there. There are four stages described by Goodell in 1920. The one is the stage of analgesia, stage of delirium. Third one is stage of uh, surgical anesthesia and finally stage 4 is medullary paralysis. Why it is important? Because when we want to conduct a surgery, do a surgery, actually we need to maintain the patient under the stage 3 of surgical anesthesia. I will tell you the reason why that this particular stage and especially there are 4 planes in this surgical anesthesia. In the up to plane 2 here, if you can see here plane 2. So that is the stage we have to reach to conduct the smooth surgery of surgery. So first we will go to the stage of analgesia.